Okay, so we're going to use this cross-section of a kidney in order to illustrate epithelial cells. Epithelial cells are the type of cells that line and cover most organ systems in the body. Uh, and they can be described as simple or stratified, depending on whether they've got one layer or several layers. I'm going to use this section of kidney to demonstrate the different kinds of epithelial cells that we have. And we're going to start with the simple type. So starting with the simple squamous cells, uh, these cells you can see here and here and here along have very flat nuclei. The actual cytoplasm is not even visible in a light microscope. They look like fried eggs, these cells, with the nucleus being the yolk and the cytoplasm being the white of the egg. And we use these cells where we need uh, very thin cells, usually to facilitate diffusion. So we see them in lining capillaries, we see them lining the alveoli of the lungs so air can diffuse, oxygen and nutrients can easily diffuse across these cells into capillary lumens and therefore into the bloodstream. So that's where we find simple squamous epithelium. So the next type of epithelium we're going to talk about is simple cuboidal. And cuboidal epithelium is like square, like a cube shaped. Uh, you can see the cell membrane here and the nucleus, so you can see little square cells, so they're like little dice, just little cubes. And these tend to line ducts, uh, so we find them in breast tissue, we find them in the tubules of the kidney, and you can see that they're quite nice and square. Uh, and they are functional cells, they quite often do secretion or absorption, uh, sometimes they uh, just provide a lining for a duct as well and that's their job, and those are the sorts of places that you might find them. So if we scoot to the middle of this slide, we will find some columnar epithelial cells, and you can see again the nucleus here, and then these tall columnar cells lining this collecting duct of the kidney. Columnar cells are full of organelles. They're usually pretty busy, and that's why they're so tall, because they actually need the space for all the organelles within them. They usually are found in uh, anywhere where ma major secretion or absorption occurs, so in glands lining the GI tract, the stomach and the small intestine and the large intestine, uh, where we do a lot of secretion and absorption. Uh, one thing to note here is that you can see the cytoplasm of this cell very nicely, you can see the nuclei very nicely, but the cytoplasm appears to be almost empty. Um, and it's just to note that you can't really see organelles in the light microscope. You need an electron microscope to see anything smaller than the nucleus, really. So those are the three types of simple epithelium. Squamous for diffusion, cuboidal for more uh, work in terms of secretion, absorption and lining, and columnar where there's a lot of secretion and absorption going on. Each of these will sit on a basement membrane which runs along the bottom of it and divides it from the underlying connective tissue and there will always be underlying support connective tissue underneath epithelium to provide them with the blood supply and provide them with some fibrous uh, mechanical support because they're only one cell thick. Now I also mentioned that there are stratified cells and those are cells that are many layers thick and I want to show you one now. There are two types of stratified epithelia and this one here is called transitional epithelium and as you can see it is many layers thick so this is where the basement membrane would be running or is running you just can't see it at, at using a light microscope um, separating it from the underlying connective tissue which supports it and in this case, we've got several layers. These are the nuclei all stacked up on top of each other. But hopefully you can spot that the, the top layer of nuclei uh, is sort of polyhedral in shape, uh, lots of different shapes. Some of them are a bit flatter, some of them are a bit rounder. And this is called a transitional epithelium, where the upper cells aren't of a regular shape. This is only found in the ureter and in the bladder. Uh, and those, the reason for this is because it needs to be um, quite tough, an area of sort of wear and tear, but also these top cells need to be flexible in shape in order to accommodate the distension of the ureter and the distension of the bladder when they're full. 
So I haven't shown you the stratified squamous epithelium and I'm going to do that now using the most common place that we find it and that's the skin. This is the skin and the skin is covered with epithelium which is the purple bit that you can see on the top supported by connective tissue which contains fibres, blood vessels, uh, nerve supply etc. Uh, and then underneath that deep down you can see this sort of blobby stuff. This is fat so this is the subcutaneous tissue or the hypodermis. So in the skin we call this the epidermis the dermis and the hypodermis are subcutis and that's where we get the term hypodermic needle or subcutaneous injection from. This skin is hairy so we can see we can't really see the hairs poking at the top in this particular section but we can see the the hair follicles we can see the roots of the follicles down here we can see the hair shaft here and the the epithelial lining here and so the skin really is um, a, an epithelial surface which grows down as hair follicles, as sebaceous glands to oil those uh, hairs and as sweat glands. So checking the epithelium of the skin here in more detail, um, we can see that it is several cells thick. Again, this is where the basement membrane would be. Lots of cells thick. And at the top, we've got um, this shapeless amorphous um, flakes uh, which is keratin. So a stratified squamous epithelium is many layers thick and it's described by the shape of the cells at the surface which you can see here are very flat so that's why it's called a stratified squamous epithelium. In this case a stratified squamous keratinizing epithelium because of the keratin flakes on top which help with waterproofing and antibacterial properties of the skin. In other stratified squamous epithelia, you don't have this keratin layer. Thank you for listening to another podcast brought to you by School of Surgery. Remember, you can follow us on Facebook at School of Surgery, on iTunes, on Podomatic at schoolofsurgery.podomatic.com, and finally, by searching School of Surgery on YouTube. Thank you very much, and see you next time.